Hello and welcome to the Flask Mega Tutorial. My name is Miguel Greenberg and I'm going to be your host on this journey through web development with Python and Flask. In this introductory video, I want to give you an overview of the topics that are covered. And I'm going to do that by showing you a demo of the application that is built as part of this tutorial. The entire tutorial is dedicated to building one application and in each chapter we are going to be looking at a different feature for it. So as you move through the chapters you're going to be learning new things. So I'm going to go ahead and connect and here you can see I have a login prompt and this is an important feature that's covered near the beginning of the tutorial. Uh, there is a complete uh, user authentication system that is built and you can see that uh, I, I can log in with my username and password. There is a option to uh, use to new users to register to uh, create new accounts. And then a little bit later I'm going to show you how to build a password recovery option for users that forget their passwords. So they are going to enter their email and then they're going to receive a reset link by email. Uh, when they click that link, they're going to be offered the option to uh, set a new password. So I already have an account on this server, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in. And here we, we have a, a, a simple blogging application. Uh, users can write uh, short blog posts more or less in a, in, in a Twitter kind of uh, way. And you can see that this post I wrote two months ago and uh, that, that's the only post that I have on my timeline, which is what I see on my homepage. So I can go ahead and write a new message and as soon as I submit it, it becomes part of my timeline. So I can also click on my name and access my profile page and here I see a, a big avatar of myself. I can see the last time I connected. I can see how many followers I have, which right now I have only one, and I'm not following any users right now. And, and then I see my messages as well. I can go into a profile editor, and uh, for example, I can enter some information about myself. There we go. So uh, now if I go back to my profile, my information shows in, in that page. Um, but of course, the, the whole point of this application is to have uh, ma many users collaborating and uh, writing posts. So I can go to the Explore page and here I can see all the posts that all the users in this system have written. and there are uh, a few of them. You can see at the bottom there are many more posts that uh, than fit on one page. So I have full support to going back and forth on the uh, on the list of posts. So I, I can do pagination on very long lists of uh, posts. I can also, if, if I'm interested in a user, I can click the name and then I can see the profile page for that user. And when I'm there, I can also follow the user. So now I'm following this user. Let's go ahead and uh, let's pick a couple more. I'm going to follow this person and this person. So now I'm following three people. So if I go to my profile, now I, now I see that I'm following three. And when I go to my home page, now not only I see my own posts, but I see the posts of the users that I'm following. So here I get my personalized timeline uh, where I see the posts that I'm interested in. So I would say that all these features that I showed you so far are covered in the first half of the tutorial, which is the, the portion of the tutorial that is uh, beginner accessible. So, so all, all these topics are covered near the beginning in the first half and 
then the second half starts to focus on topics that are a little bit more advanced. And as you make progress in your development skills, you will be able to take advantage of all those uh, slightly more advanced options that you have access from Flask. So some of the things that you are going to learn in that second part are, for example, a search. So here, for example, I can do, uh, let's see, if I search for hello, I can see all the posts in the system that have that word. And I, I can, I can I issue more complex queries. I can say, hello world. And here I'm going to see the posts that have more of the words that I selected in my search. They're, they're, they're going to be first. But I'm also going to see posts that have partial matches. So this is a, uh, a very intelligent uh, text search that I, I'm using here. That's actually based on Elasticsearch. This is a service that you are going to learn how to use as part of this tutorial. So another thing that I can do is if I'm interested in a user, I can hover my mouse pointer over the, the username and I can see some information on a pop-up without having to click and uh, access the uh, the home page, the, the profile page of the user. And right fr from right here, I can see the most important information and I can follow or unfollow. So here on mine, you can see even my uh, about me text shows in this pop-up. Another feature that's covered near the end of the tutorial is the ability for users to send private messages to other users. So I'm going to demonstrate this by going to my second screen, which you are not seeing. And on, on that screen, I'm logged in as a different user. So I'm going to go ahead and send a private message to myself so that we see how that works. So there we go. I sent myself a private message. So now I'm, I'm here working on my application and you can see that without me doing anything, I get a notification that I have a message. So there we go. Now I can read my messages on the, on the private messages page. So this is done in the background. So, so there is going to be some uh, JavaScript covered in, in this late part of the tutorial so that we, uh, we can implement this without uh, the user having to reload the page for the notification to appear. Another feature that's covered in this application is the ability to work with multiple languages. There is a chapter dedicated to creating translations for all the bits of text that appear in this application so that when uh, a user has the web browser configured to prefer Spanish text, then automatically uh, that user is going to receive the Spanish version of the application, for example. So you will be able to define the same texts that are used on this application on different languages, your favorite languages. And, and then uh, those are all going to be automatically served to users that prefer those languages. Also, along the same lines of working with multiple languages, the application has support for live translations of posts that are written in a different language. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to, uh, to write a blog post in a different language. I'm going to use Spanish. So there we go. So now we have a post in Spanish. And you can see that the server automatically detected that this language is not the language that I have selected, which is English. So it gives me a translate link so that I can uh, request a live translation. So there we go. And uh, in, in a second, I get a live translation, which is uh, served by the Microsoft translation service. So as part of this tutorial, you are going to learn how to work with this service from Microsoft to, to do this type of, uh, of work. Um, so one more thing that I can show you that's also covered in the late portion of the tutorial in the, in the more advanced side is the ability to export your posts. 
And uh, the, the concept here is that you, you may want to get a, an archive, a data file, with all the posts that you have written. And potentially that could be a long operation if, if you have a lot of posts. So this is executed in a background job. So I'm going to go ahead and request a data file of those posts. And you can see that uh, automatically I get a bar at the top that shows me the progress of that export task. And this progress is going to be updated as the export task runs. You can see that I'm, I'm not changing my page and the percentage is being updated automatically. So it, once again, there's going to be a little bit of JavaScript here to achieve this type of solution. Uh, but this is even more interesting because I can, I can navigate to a different page and all the pages remember the context and remember that there's a background task going and it keeps me updated of that progress. Eventually, this task is going to reach 100% and at that point, I'm going to be sent an email with a data file with all these blog posts that I have written. So I, I would say that uh, all the features that I showed you are a very good uh, description of what this tutorial is about and I look forward to see you when we begin with chapter one.